We recently visited Japan, which continues to be for us one of the most unique countries in the world. Tokyo was just named the safest city in the world and certainly is the cleanest and most polite. The Japanese people and their culture and Japan's important role in the world cannot be ignored. Over the next few weeks, we'll explore Japan's plans for revitalizing its economy, its world leadership in technology, and its vast and intriguing cultural depth. On this program, we'll explore the many facets of Japanese culture and find out why Japan is becoming an increasingly popular tourist destination. We'll learn about Japanese food in Kyoto, Shinto beliefs in the heart of Tokyo, and the practice of meditation in Koyosan. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. The day was misty, rainy, and cold, but it all added to the mystique and magic of our visit to Koyazan. It's a temple complex founded 1,200 years ago by the Japanese religious leader Kukai, also known as Kobo Daishi. He brought Shingon Buddhism to Koyasan after studying in China. After a wonderful meal, I toured the grounds with guide Kauri Kodama, met some American students involved in a semester at sea program, visited the Grand Pagoda, and learn the very basics of meditation from one of the monks, Reverend Suki Hara. What makes this area so special? So this place away from bustling city and the Koyasan, shape of Koyasan is said to be the shape of lotus flower of 16 petals. How many uh, temples are in the area? There are 117 temples in Koyasan. Oh no, more than 1,000 monks live in Koyasan. 1,000? 1,000. And what's the population of the entire town? 3,800. This is a beautiful area. Yeah. Tell me about Koyasan. Uh, actually, Koya Mountain uh, is found uh, by Kobo Daishi about 1,200 years ago. This mountain is very quiet, so Kobo Daishi made uh, a uh, quiet place for the monks because monks need a practice for meditation or praying every day. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, Koya Mountain is a good place for monks. And uh, also nowadays, uh, many tourists and many people come here and feel like relaxing, uh, like, uh, just comfortable. How many monks are here in Koyasan now? Uh, I think a thousand monks. A, a thousand monks yeah, yeah, yeah. are here. Wow. How, how long have you been here? I have been to Koyasan for four years. What have you learned? <laughs> Many things. Of course, uh, uh, how to do meditation, how to um, read the chant, uh, or uh, of course, uh, studying about Buddhism mm -hmm. uh, and also um, I think many things for my life. Uh, people are running, 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 mm -hmm. their uh, cell phones, uh, television, mm -hmm. they're moving here, they're moving there. Uh, life is very complex, huh? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say that, uh, like, uh, especially I say that for Japanese people, 
the Japanese people is very busy, uh, so they don't have enough time. But uh, they need uh, more relaxing. Mm -hmm. So meditation is uh, for, uh, good for uh, their life or their uh, mind. So if you were going to teach me, mm -hmm. first lesson of meditation. Uh, first lesson is uh, just uh, make uh, posture. Posture? Yeah, the posture is a very uh, in, uh, important thing for how to breathe in. Posture, posture number one? Yeah. And then breathing? And breathing. And it uh, makes a feeling. Feeling for calm and uh, concentration. How long will you meditate? Say in the morning or at night? How long? Uh, actually, I don't decide how long. Uh, depends on day. Five minutes or 10 minutes, 15 minutes is uh, enough. It is? Yeah, yeah. So I don't decide. Who decides? <laughs> my, my body, my, ah. yeah, inside of my, ah. yeah. What ah. could you say that would help me mm -hmm. and all of the people who watch our conversation in their daily life? Uh, actually, you said last time, uh, just uh, not be busy, just relaxing. Because uh, when people feel busy, people's um, face is a little bit getting uh, angry or uh, not good face. So after relaxing, uh, people's face getting changed, like smiling or laughing. So people uh, get the chance to have a conversation. So can someone meditate for two, three minutes a day? Mm, yeah, actually meditation is a very uh, sometimes makes uh, tired, so I think three minutes or five minutes is enough for uh, every day. Calm down. Yeah. Posture. Posture. Breathing. Uh, breathing. Mm -hmm. Relax. Yeah. Clear the mind. Yeah. Let it go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Visitors who are not monks come for day trips to experience Koyasan, enjoy a night or two in a temple stay, participate in the daily life of the monks, or stay for a longer time to study Buddhism. While here, you can enjoy the small town shopping area and museum, or wander through the largest cemetery in Japan, which houses the Kukai Mausoleum. Some folks just enjoy trekking the mountainous area of Koyasan. In Tokyo, we visited the Japan National Tourism Organization and learned that Japan's tourism business is booming. We were encouraged to explore the entire country and got some tips on what to see and experience in Tokyo. Japan's doors are wide open now as they prepare to host the 2020 Olympics. Tourism to Japan is growing. What's going on? I'm very happy to say that for the last three years, Japan's inbound tourism has grown over 20% for the three consecutive years. It's an amazing history, I think. Why do you think that's happening? <laughs> the reason of this success comes from several factors, I believe. One is the brand image of Japan as a travel destination has grown in popularity worldwide. And second, the developing economy in our neighboring countries like China, Southeast Asia. People living there have now wealth enough to travel to Japan. And Japan is now very popular in these areas, in these countries as a travel nest destination. And thirdly, maybe Japan's government policy to expand airport, and other infrastructure so that we can receive so many visitors uh, in not only Tokyo area alone but all over Japan. I think these sort of measures and policies all combined contribute to this fantastic growth of inbound visitors. We've fallen in love with <laughs> Japan. I say it's clean, mm -hmm. it's safe, and it's very friendly. Thank you very much for your compliment. So if someone came to Tokyo, what are three things that you would have them see right away? First of all, 
we should recommend three major tourist attractions in Tokyo, Imperial Palace, Meiji Shrine, and Asakusa Kanon Temple. Those are the things that amaze first-time visitors for the f at first. And they want to see these sites anyway, as a tourist. On the second day, probably they may start exploring the town and meeting with the people. And just doing some shopping alone makes a very fun experience for the travelers. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you may visit some Japanese restaurant eating ramen noodles or authentic sushi. And you may feel a little bit different experience as you can do in the States or Washington, D.C. In the heart of Tokyo is the Meiji Shrine, one of the city's main attractions for both Japanese and foreign visitors alike. Being at the shrine and on its grounds, a vast forest, you've actually left the city and entered into another world. It's a stunning example of Japanese culture within one of the most modern and complex cities in the world. We were welcomed by one of the senior Shinto priests on a sparkling sunny day. The sun came out. Yes, indeed. It's been raining over the night, but since this morning, uh, it started to clear. It's a very fine weather today. The history of the shrine goes back uh, about a hundred years to um, the emperor and uh, his wife. Uh, and this shrine and the beautiful forest is uh, dedicated to them. Yes, uh, you are exactly uh, right. Uh, this was made for the Meiji Emperor and uh, his, uh, uh, the, the Shoken, the Dojer. Um, so um, the purpose uh, in the Meiji era, uh, the, the Emperor dedicated himself to modernize uh, Japan and he passed away back in 1912 and two years later uh, the, em uh, the Emperor Dojer, uh, the Shoken, uh, also passed away um, uh, in 1914. So uh, their soul uh, resides uh, in here. And the forest, a hundred thousand trees? Yes, uh, so uh, there in total there are uh, 100,000 uh, trees and those trees are dedicated from all over uh, Japan uh, to this location and uh, in total there are 365 different species uh, of wood. When this forest was built we thought about that and um, so as we go another hundred years, uh, probably uh, this forest uh, will, is regarded as the natural uh, forest and continue to grow. So we have to maintain this uh, forest in a very good manner. That is one of our challenges. What is at the heart of the Shinto religion? The precondition of Shinto uh, in the long Japanese history that uh, we've been living our life so uh, we uh, open our heart uh, to God, and then uh, we feel that God, God is uh, let us alive. So that is the precondition of the Shinto. No uh, founder? There is no founder. Uh, so uh, the Japanese people has been succeeding uh, uh, this uh, the thought uh, from the predecessors and then that has been succeeding that is uh, uh, intertwined and introduced in our daily life and then that uh, is connected to our daily life today. Do we pray to a deity? So uh, in terms of God, uh, there are many kinds of God. Uh, first, there's a God who, who created the universe, and there's a God for natures, uh, the God for like uh, uh, the, the, the plants and uh, the rocks and mountains, and also uh, there is a God uh, for those uh, the hero who made a, uh, who actually made a big achievement. So all those gods are in here. What is the role of the priest? The priest works in between uh, the visitors who came here to pray and the gods. So that is our main role. So we hear all the wishes uh, from the visitors who came here to pray and we convey that words uh, to the gods. And then uh, we received protection from the gods and then convey that to the visitors, the prayers. I thank you for the education and for our visit to your beautiful shrine.
I guess people know uh, Tokyo, they also know Kyoto. They hear Kyoto very traditional. Uh, what's to see there? Kyoto was the imperial capital of Japan, and Kyoto was once chosen as the world's number one favorite tourist city by the American famous travel magazine. 99% of the people who visit Kyoto will love the city, and you can spend one whole week enjoying the city sites and traditional houses, gardens, and so on. You know the tea ceremony? Yes. I'm not expert in the tea ceremony, but uh, in the ceremony, we need to show respect to the others. Uh -huh. So we, need, we wish to show the respect and hospitality to the guests coming to the city or Japan. Understanding each other, starting, will start with showing the respect to each other. And I think you can experience this sort of ex uh, uh, time in Japan. Traditional Japanese food is known as washoku and was recently recognized by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage. In Kyoto, we visited the World Japanese Cuisine Show, a program of lectures, discussions, demonstrations, and competitions. The entire event was produced and hosted by the world-famous Japanese chef Yoshihiro Murata and featured as a special guest the equally renowned French chef Alain Ducasse. At the end of the festivities, we witnessed the preparation of a special washoku meal prepared under the direction of Master Chef Murata. What is a famous French chef doing in Japan? We've got a common interest to feed each other. Uh, we've got a common interest in ingredients, in the way we cook the product, in the way we've got the passion for the cuisine. So I think all those similar points makes me to come today to this place. You have some restaurants here in Japan? Yes, uh, it's uh, French gastronomy and contemporary fine dining. We have also a bistro uh, located in another place in Tokyo. What have you learned from the Japanese? The precision first, the way they prepare and the, the fine interest that they have in the product. All the, the, the way to cook uh, in the detail with a very high level of technique is very impressive and very uh, touchable for me. Aesthetic is a very important part in both, in both countries, in both cuisine. But still, what we love mainly from uh, the, the Japanese cuisine is the attention that they pay to the, to the product, to the ingredients, the way they cook the things, the techniques they have, okay? The, the philosophy that they have to work on a very small detail. For our American viewers, what message do you have from this conference, both taking into consideration French point of view, Japanese point of view? What is the message of the conference? What I wish is American viewers open their hearts and to understand that there is great things outside also and the French food, the Japanese food is part is very cultural, historical and they are moving forward. French cuisine and Japanese cuisine are very close together for one and unique message. This is a big event. Who is attending today's conference? We have among our attendees a famous chef from uh, France, famous chefs from Japan, and members of the ingredient supplier community, as well as academicians or professors from Kyoto University or Tokyo Universities. I organized this event to celebrate one year anniversary of the registration of Japanese cuisine as world cultural heritage. So I want to promote the benefits of the Japanese cuisine to many, many people in the world. What is so special about Japanese cuisine? We require the diet of 30 different kinds of food or ingredients per day. So people in different parts of the world eat different kinds of carbohydrates, whether it's bread, rice, or none for Indian people. But the, most of the diets of the world are constructed around fat. However, the unique thing about the Japanese cuisine is that 
it, cons it is constructed around umami instead of around fat. And is it a, uh, a seasoning? Is it a nutrient? Exactly what is it? It is a nutrient. Umami has uh, zero calorie. Fat contains nine kilocalories per one cc of fat. Therefore, I believe to construct cuisine around umami is going to make great contribution to promote health of the people globally. Even if you use a little bit of fat, if you put a lot of umami in your food, then you can use only small quantity of fat. So I think I'm getting the drift here. It's the selection of the foods that are in the diet that makes it healthy. You have invited a great French uh, chef to come to be part of the conference. What are you hoping to learn from him? I find it fascinating that the French cuisine, such as practiced by Monsieur Ducasse, uh, changes so much according to the times. And uh, I wanted to learn the core philosophy of the French cuisine that allows it to change and morph itself so much. You have to cook a big uh, dinner tonight. What will be on the menu? It will be a kaiseki, a formal Japanese dinner course. So there will be all kinds of food. So Kiyomizu Temple, which is nearby, and which is also a world's cultural heritage, uh, members of the Japan Japanese Cuisine Academy, such as ourselves, uh, 20 of them are uh, already there, very busy preparing and cooking for the guests of 50 people. Are you a tough taskmaster with the chefs? Of course. <laughs> of course. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for our conversation. Arigato. I know it's a long way away, but it's probably a short way away. 2020 Olympics, mm -hmm. huge for Japan, isn't it? Sure. What will happen over the next few years as far as engaging tourism, encouraging people to give Japan uh, a, a try, all leading up to the Olympics, huh? I think uh, five years ahead of now is a very important period of time that we can get prepared, not only uh, for successfully holding the Olympic and Paralympic Games, but also receiving, in our, from our point of view, the 20 million target number of incoming visitors to Japan. And we should, and we are trying to make all the necessary preparations and uh, uh, building up the necessary infrastructure and maybe studying more English <laughs> so that people can have a nice friendly time in not only in Tokyo alone but also for all over Japan. So we are working very hard to make it a meaningful opportunity for income visitors but this is also a very good opportunity for us to improve our uh, receiving hospitality and general infrastructure. I think. So if I gave you the opportunity mm -hmm to talk directly to the people back in the United States, mm -hmm. and you were given an opportunity to do 30 second commercial, <laughs> 30 second commercial <laughs> about coming to Japan, looking right into the lens of the camera, what would you tell them? Oh, to all the US citizens, we welcome uh, whenever they come to Japan, but please try to step beyond Tokyo Tokyo is a very attractive, nice city, hosting the Olympic Games, but we have a lot more things to offer other than Tokyo. Please enjoy Japan. Japan's cultural depth is truly bottomless. Everywhere you go, you find something exclusive to the country, which makes traveling to Japan so much fun. To me, the most pleasant surprise is the fact that Japan is one of the most modern countries in the world, yet is still grounded in its history, culture, and traditions. For that reason alone, Japan is truly amazing.
For information about This Is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services.